I'm Alex Cherian. I'm the film archivist at San Francisco State University. The John Paul Leonard Library has a department of special collections. We preserve over 4,000 hours of news, film and documentary material that was produced in the Bay Area from the 1950s through to about 1980. We're digitizing this material and making it available to view online for free in Diva. Like you're a detective and you, you use special collections, you look at the diva footage, you're able to make your own conclusions, you join that with good scholarship, I think you have a more holistic view of what actually occurred. I came across an, a surprising and unusual link which was to Art in Action, a film clip in the collection of San Francisco State University's Diva Digital Archive that I was unaware of and I clicked on it and was shocked as this live, very beautiful color imagery of Diego Rivera on the scaffolding appeared. But as you watch the footage, you see many other people appear. We see an image of the artist Mine Okubo doing a demonstration about fresco technique. When I saw this clip, I knew Mine Okubo personally as a very old woman just before her death because we've done a lot of research about Asian American artists here at San Francisco State. She was a salty woman in her old age and here she is in bright yellow pants. And I thought that is Mine Okubo. What historians can do when they're using our collection is bring these not new voices, but remind people of the voices that were commonplace back in the day. And, and Diva is allowing them to do that. There are thousands of unique voices within the archive, and in that sense, what we're presenting you through Diva is with a living history. It gives us another perspective on multiculturalism in America to see so many artists of diverse ethnicities working together in 1939 in San Francisco. San Francisco in the 1950s, 60s and 70s was a hotbed of civil rights movements. It was one of the birthplaces for the gay and lesbian civil rights movements. The local Oakland Black Panther chapter was very active in the 1960s. In June 1971, Native Americans were removed from Alcatraz by federal agents. They'd been occupying the rock for 18 months trying to bring world attention to the civil rights needs of Native American people. A few months later, Cron TV made a documentary about the Native American occupation of Alcatraz and its aftermath. And we uh, looked at these clips and it was so exciting to see history unfolding. Over the years, you know, uh, Alcatraz has come to signify a lot of stuff to a lot of people. There's a whole lot of Native American activists out there that are doing their thing, you know. That, and I think a lot of that came from Alcatraz, but not. It didn't. It, you know, it wasn't like you know we did it. It was just an idea. In the name of all Indians, therefore, we reclaim this island for our, for all Indian nations, for all these reasons. We feel this claim is just and proper, and that this land should rightfully be granted to us for as long as the river shall run and the sun shall shine. Shall sign. Signed Indians of all tribes, November 1969, San Francisco, California. This visibility through primary sources that people can relate to is essential, not only for scholarship, but also for the promotion of human rights. In 1899, one of the world's first film archivists, who was the photographer for Tsar Nicholas II, commented on the cinematographic print. He said that it makes the dead and the absent stand up and walk. And that is the essence of using film as a historical resource. People can see and hear what is happening and imagine what it was like at the time. It hits them on a gut level and it allows them to interact with what might otherwise be cold and distant material. <laughs>